So welcome everyone to theme.json in classic themes. I'm your host, Cynthia Norman, and we have Catherine here in the chat helping us with um, monitoring your questions. We will be waiting till the end of our talk to address any concerns, questions you have on this topic. And uh, rest assured that we will be making our recording today available to you within the show notes after today, along with the presentation here that I'll be showing you. All right, so without further ado, I will jump in. So today's objectives, after um, a brief uh, introduction, I'm going to introduce to you a use case that I am in the middle of right now. It, it actually started two years ago, so it's quite a big project that I'm involved in that I would like to share just to kind of um, illustrate how we can bring classic themes into modern WordPress. Then I'll talk a little bit about theme.json in an, um, a general basic manner and give you a quick little demo using a couple classic themes. Then I will walk you through the process of adding theme.json to a classic theme. And that will feel a little bit more hands-on. And then we'll jump in at the end. I My goal is to leave about 10, 15 minutes at the end for questions and an open discussion. So I am located in Ontario, Canada, and I work as a freelance WordPress developer. I primarily work with WordPress agencies building WordPress sites, and I've been doing so since 2019. Um, previous to that, I was a C-sharp programmer with a SaaS company. For the past year or so, I've been a content creator with the training team over at Learn WordPress. And most recently, I was able to publish with a team of contributors over at Learn WordPress the Intermediate Theme Developer Learning Pathway. And if you haven't had a chance to check out our new way of presenting lessons over at Learn WordPress, do check that out. And finally, if you want to get a hold of me at any point after today's talk, feel free to go to my website, cynthianorman.com, and probably the quickest way to get a hold of me would be to DM me in Slack, because I'm usually there almost daily. So when you registered for today's event, I had you answer this question. Do you have a classic theme you would like to convert to a block theme? And a lot of you said yes, and some said maybe. But regardless, I felt that um, this was a topic that theme authors are interested in, and your replies kind of reaffirmed that to myself. So I was really happy to see those replies. I'll tell you though, in the last two years since I started working on this idea of converting a classic theme to a blog theme, I'm at the point now where I would highly recommend you actually consider stopping at the hybrid stage. So taking your classic theme and adding theme.json would be one way to have a hybrid theme and be able to benefit from modern WordPress blocks. And we'll get into some of the details in a moment. But it's just, even if you had the budget and the time, converting classic themes to a block theme is sometimes just not possible. So just wanted to throw that out there. Now I am interested on a scale of one to five, 
one being nothing and five being everything, how much would you say you already know about theme.json? If you could just drop that number into the chat and Catherine can let us know where you're at with that topic. So I opened up the chat here. So just looking here, um, I've got yeah, a lot of you are feeling quite comfortable, and some are in the middle. Great. Okay, thank you for that. And another thing I wanted to mention is. Today's talk is about the block editor, not the site editor. So the word editor gets thrown around a little loosely. So I wanted to distinguish the difference. So we're talking about going into posts or pages and working with the block editor. Well, now I want to talk a little bit about that use case I was telling you about. So, um, I'm part of a team and as the developer, I've got um, a designer doing a redesign for a client that has a custom theme, a classic custom theme that was built in 2015. And this is um, a theme that bundled up the custom post types taxonomy and they didn't use a plugin, so change the theme, break the site. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with that concept. However, it's so custom um, that, to be honest, it wouldn't have mattered if it was in a plugin because it was just so. I mean, every everything that they do is uh, wrapped around these custom post types. So they have PHP templates, PHP files, and they're using CMB2 for their meta boxes. And um, since 2015, they've been adding posts and they were clear on wanting to preserve all of their data. Now the client adds the posts and they're using the classic editor and pages are being built primarily by developers and admins and they're using Visual Composer. And the styles were um, created using SAS and a build process. So I came along two years ago wondering how I could take that redesign from the designer and take modern WordPress and take advantage of the block editor. So I decided to keep the structure the same. So all the PHP files, the custom post types, taxonomy and meta boxes are still there using CMB2. I added a child theme. Now this is totally optional for adding uh, theme.json. You can add theme.json to your root theme files. And I also added a new style sheet in order over to, um, I wanted to override the SAS. Now you might, might be wondering, why do I need a style sheet if I'm adding theme.json? So that is, that's a work in progress. I'm still working on getting those, those styles into theme.json. Um, so one of the benefits for the client is that they no longer will be using the classic editor. They'll be able to use the block editor. And if you look at their posts, you'll see how like everything is like in one column. So I'm, I'm envisioning that their posts will, will be so much more, you know, aesthetically pleasing going forward. 
because of the block editor. Uh, I'm also taking advantage of uh, unsynced and synced WordPress patterns in order to build out those new pages myself. Um, and I wanted to point out that there's this argument show in rest that you're going to want to consider adding to your um, PHP argument um, for the custom post types in order to be able to work with them in the block editor. So as long as it's set to true. I'll be uh, providing them with training so that uh, they'll know how to use the block editor for creating their, their new posts going forward. And like I said, um, I will be transferring styles into theme.json. My goal is to eliminate the need for the, that, the SAS files completely, eliminate the need for that additional style sheet and to have all of my styles in theme.json. So like I said, this is something I'm currently working through and I would love to talk to like-minded theme authors um, as to like what, what you think about the solution I came up with and um, hopefully uh, later on at the end of this session today, we can brainstorm a little bit. So what is theme.json? So uh, like I was saying, I want to grab a, a classic theme to illustrate what happens when we add theme.json to a classic theme. Now I had to pick uh, this one here, Resort Vacation, which I found on the WordPress theme directory because they're not using the function add theme support. So you may have already played around with that within your own theme by placing that function within functions.php. I will say that um, also that I couldn't um, do a demo with uh, 2020 or the other WordPress themes because they are using the add theme support function. So if you're wanting to learn more about that, certainly you'll find lots of examples within those themes. So that's why I chose this one. And um, also the other theme we'll be looking at today is one that I personally created a little over four years ago. So I'm gonna show you with theme.json added how we can remove uh, the ability for the user to select custom colors remove the default custom palette and add a custom palette that is you know on brand and just a quick note that if we don't remove the ability to se select custom colors that's coming from the theme.json file within the wp includes folder so a lot of that is um, is already preset there. So we're basically reversing what's what's in there when we do things um, in in this list here that I have for you here for this quick demo. All right, so I'm just going to switch over now to WordPress. So here I've got the um, active theme, my classic theme, Cat Mom, and I just want to show you kind of out of the box WordPress when we go in on the right hand side here this is what you'll see is the ability to choose a custom color the default palette for both text and the background and you also see quite a few settings here under typography that people can mess around with and really get your website off brand pretty quickly. So that's that's one of the advantages personally I'm feeling like we we have we can gain control of all of that by adding theme.json. So if I switch over to that resort theme that already has theme.json added and I can show you quickly what that looks like. So 
So here we have something that looks a little different. We've got my own palette, a custom palette added, and the ability to choose that custom color is gone and the default palette is gone. In order to do that, I'll show you in VS Code, you start off by adding in theme.json at the root of your theme files. And then you put in, the schema is optional, the version, if I'll talk about this um, in more detail a little later, but the version will either be two or three here, and then settings, when, you, when you're working with uh, um, something like VS Code here, you can benefit from the schema and you can hover over and learn quite a bit as you're working through. But we've got settings color and then the custom property there set to false, removed the, abil the ability for users to select a custom color. And then the default palette here, set to false, remove that default palette. And then background was entirely removed, so people can't change the background colors. And then we've got a custom palette here, which is an array of those colors I just showed you. So, um, now I'd like to get into the more step-by-step uh, -step, um, portion where we start from scratch. We've got a classic theme that, again, doesn't have add theme support in functions.php. And I wanted to make sure to point out that when you're, when you're starting fresh with your theme.json file, you're going to want to choose the most recent version of the schema, which is version three currently. However, that requires WordPress 6.6 .6 being installed on your site. So if you're still using 6.5, then I've shown you here how you would do that. You specify your version of WordPress and the version for the schema will be two. Uh, Version one didn't last very long, so you'll either be going with two or three. I'm going to head back to uh, WordPress here, and I'm going to activate the cat mom theme. And then we're going to hop into Visual Studio Code and work within that theme here. So you would add your theme.json and then really you could open up your curly braces and just put in the version and that would be your start. However, adding the schema is highly recommended because it helps, like I was saying, with giving you those little hints and errors. For instance, commas are very important within JSON. If I just enter in, say I were to enter in my settings for removing, I went like that that would throw an error because of, you pro some of you probably already know, we have to have that comma there. And another thing I wanted to point out is when you're working within theme.json, so I, if I wanted to add my custom palette now, I would enter in the comma and go like that. So when I open up those quotes, then I know what is available as a property under settings color. So we see palette, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead and um, just copy paste what I've got here prepared. Okay, let's clean this up a bit, make sure there's no errors. So now, if I go, I have to um, always remember when you make a change in theme.json to um, refresh or reload your, your WordPress. Okay, so here we see the same thing as I showed you with the resort theme, um, where we've got our custom palette and then we've lost some settings. So you can see the power of adding theme.json for streamlining your design and reducing overwhelm with your end users and um, staying on brand because all of these, I mean, all of these here, you know, appearance, letter spacing, this can really throw off your design as you can well imagine. So you can either add settings or remove them. All right. Um, we are doing well. I did want to talk about some more settings. So the next one I wanted to show you is within blocks. And um, I'll just go like this and kind of show you how you would be working through. So if I want, um, a new setting here. I start with my comma and like I said, open quotes and now I want blocks. So I'm wanting to start addressing blocks specifically, which again, just to reiterate, if you go with add theme support within functions.php, you don't have the ability to um, tackle those blocks specifically, like I'm showing you here. So with, um, you can see all of the core blocks popping up here. So I'm just going to show you an example with um, the heading block. So you can, you can just press tab if you want it. And then another helpful thing here is as soon as I enter a colon, I can see where I need to now just press enter to get those braces. So this, because a lot of people may have the sentiment that it's difficult to work with JSON. So I'm just trying to show you some little tips here I've been learning as I've been working with it myself. So go here and I'm like, okay, so now I want to address uh, color. So I enter the C and then tab. And then next I want to put in text. So my goal here with this is I'm wanting to disable color support for heading blocks. So the next thing would be text. And to disable it, instead of having it as true, which it defaults to, I just set it to false. And I also want to re remove um, the ability to change the background color. So background, again, false. So then once I um, return to WordPress and reload, then I should see now, if I go into that outline view there, I've got a group here and a heading to show you. So now we don't have color support. So pretty powerful stuff here. And um, we can well imagine that, uh, I mean, we there are so many settings 
you could go through. Um, there is a resource I wanted to share with you. It's the um, the block the block handbook. So Catherine can help with that link. But let's just quickly go here. So this is uh, at theme support. If you're wanting to look that up, you'll find that within WordPress developer resources. And uh, this is the one here that I wanted to, sh to talk to you about. So if you're just getting started and you're wondering, because you're entering in your settings and then eventually styles, and it's going to feel very different than adding CSS, right? It's, 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 there's a, a growth period, right? For sure. But these resources can definitely get you started with the options and then the um, the uh, scheme schemas also have a lot of really helpful information for you. So I wanted to point that out. And um, we have time for one, a few more examples. So I'm going to hop back in to theme.json. And now I wanted to show you if I wanted to add color support for the core group block. So instead of having that complete palette here, this palette here, within the group, say you wanted to provide a, a separate set of colors, you can do that as well. So I am just going to copy that over from my notes. So it's another core block, but this one is core group. So you can see here that we're providing a custom palette, but we only want it available within the group block. So I'm just going to save and switch back to WordPress. Reload. And make sure to have my group block selected. And we should see the color palette being different there, right? So we are doing good. We have um, lots of time for discussion. And I am anxious to hear from all of you and take a look at your questions and have an open discussion. So I'm going to... Um, open up the floor. Feel free to um, either ask your question in the chat or um, unmute yourself. Does anybody want to share what they're dealing with currently in terms of a classic theme that you're trying to add theme.json to and get into that hybrid theme stage? Okay, so we have a question from Shelly. I am not clear where you add the REST API. Oh, okay, so the, I mentioned the, um, I'll go back to that slide. Um, right here, so the show in REST that okay so 
when you are writing out your custom post types, you have your arguments. And so that, so that show and rest equals true would be added there. And um, I, I really can't say any more than that. If you if you need more detail, it's definitely not WP config. It's it's when you're when you're writing out creating your custom post types within your uh, PHP files. Okay, perfect, Shelley. Thank you for the question. Um, so Danielle, can you control the options on specific blocks that are not core? Hmm. Right. Um, so we are overriding when today's talk is overriding the theme.json file from WordPress. When we start bringing in blocks, third party blocks, that for me, the first thing I would do is use PHP. So I would go into functions.php. So say I had a child theme, I would add functions.php and I would be um, working in there. I know there's a lot of information available on the developer blog. There was a recent post showing us how to curate the WordPress um, like a block um, block editor experience. And so there are a lot of things we can do with PHP and JavaScript for controlling when we go into the inserter. So I'll switch back to WordPress. So when I say here, um, I'm actually kind of dealing with the same thing, not cadence blocks, but I introduced a third party set of blocks and I don't actually want them to have access to all those blocks. And so that is something that I'm going to have to handle with PHP, not theme.json. So I hope that helps a bit. Any other one wanting to share their I think this might be the developer blog. Oh, okay, yes, thank you, Catherine. Yes, so those are ways to curate um, the editing experience. Of course, they're talking in that blog about theme.json and also they get into all of the ways we can remove blocks and have a lot of control within the inserter. We can gain control over patterns and also within the media tab, we can remove open verse. So that is a, t a great topic for a future workshop, I'm sure, because it's, it's very powerful. So it's along the same lines of streamlining that editing experience, going beyond what we can do with theme.json. Okay. Any other questions? We have about 20 minutes left. Okay, so at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the theme.json that comes with uh, WordPress. So if I go into the um, WP Includes folder, and then just, uh, go to the root. And you'll find theme.json. So a lot of what you're going to want to focus on is what is 
currently in settings and what do I want to reverse? So appearance tools, that has a lot to do with the spacing and um, you can see the list there of everything that is currently turned off using false. So you may want to add appearance tools, switch it to true. And then just go through this file here and make your decisions as you're learning more and more about the power of theme.json. So you can see the custom palette here. Dimensions. So there is a lot coming from WordPress directly. Typography. And then we get into the blocks. And then some styles that are already in place. So at this point, I do want to um, reiterate that we have um, a new way of learning over at um, Learn WordPress. And I just want to show you that, just in case you haven't been over there in a while. So we have the, uh, the new look and feel to learn WordPress. And then we have these learning pathways. So if you're wanting to get a better idea of how to work with theme.json, you could either go into the beginner WordPress developer learning pathway. There's a lesson there that you may find interesting as an introduction. So this one here and um, can uh, give you a little bit more of a complete picture of working with global settings and styles. And also the Create Block theme plugin is very powerful. That's another topic that I'm considering having as um, for a future workshop. And the other thing I wanted to point out is the Intermediate Theme Developer Learning Pathway. So you can just jump in and you can go to the module of interest and just dive in. So if there are any other questions, we can talk about them now. We have um, about 20 more minutes. group. I would love to hear from you if you have a classic theme and you're worried uh, in, uh, at all about adding theme.json. Certainly, if you have, oh, there's a question from Danielle. When you first open a page for editing, the patterns pop up for se selection. Can, can this be disabled? All right. Um, yes. So, right, with the classic, classic themes, we have that. Let's go over there to make sure everyone knows what you're referring to. So here, within here, we've got that patterns. So yes, we can disable that. Um, uh, go, feel free, Danielle, to remind remind me um, if I forget to add. I, I I'd like to give you those specifics within a comment below uh, today's. Um, 
show in the show notes i'll i'll add some specifics to to say exactly how because that that's a really good question as well this is on 2024 Sorry, Danielle, d um, were you replying or could you elaborate? Oh, you're saying that, yeah, sorry. Did I answer your question, Danielle? When you say the patterns pop up, yeah. Was I right, Danielle? Yeah, that's, that's one place. Um, <clears throat> in the 2024 theme, it's not a classic theme, of course, but when you just create a new page and it, it starts to load the editing environment instead of letting you. Yeah. See, that's actually the desired behavior in 2024. When you, when you do that, it pops a window, a modal window with all the patterns on it and, and, oh, yes. uh, and ask you to select one and, and like to get rid of that guy. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yes, you can. I just don't know by heart, but I know that these things are are completely possible within block themes. Um, yes. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I would encourage you to take a look at the um, the intermediate theme developer course because there's a lot of good information there to give you that 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 kind of global picture of. Um, you know, what our block theme's all about, you know, to go way beyond what we're talking about here today, which is, which is theme.json. But thank you for the question. And I will also look that up for you and drop that in as a comment after today's talk. Any other questions? I would like to hear from you um, in terms of, okay, I think there's a new message here from Martina. I see theme.json in different directories, WP includes or under themes, child themes. What's the difference here? So Um, right. So within WP Includes, that's theme.json that ships with WordPress. All right. And under themes, child themes, are you, so when you say you see, could you elaborate there? Are you talking about your own, your own website? You have a classic theme that has a child theme with theme.json? Is that correct, Martina? Because if you do, if you have theme.json within child themes, that means you're, you've got a block theme. You haven't, so I, yeah, in 2024, right. So that's a block theme. 2024 is a block theme. So you're you're going to see it in WP Includes, which is WordPress. And then if we open up here, so I happen to have 2024 here as a theme. So being a block theme, it has its own theme.json. And if I add a child theme, then I can have another theme.json within my child theme. I think it's important um, for me to also mention that there's a precedence going on here. So I'm happy to do a future workshop on block themes, but I want to focus on classic themes adding theme.json, it's important to note that when you add theme.json to your classic theme, so cat mom here would be a classic theme, my style sheet is going to take precedence over my theme.json. 
However, if someone is in WordPress and they're adding a page or post and they're styling things, those user styles are saved in the database and that's going to override um, my the theme.json. So there's that precedence to be fully aware of as well. So within a block theme, you you won't have your style. The style.css file is there in your block theme. That's important to note as well. But it really has the only function of letting WordPress know that this theme exists with this header here. So there are no styles coming from the style sheet here in this block theme. All of the styles are coming from this theme.json file here. So there's settings, and then all of the styles that you see when you've got 2024 active, they're all coming from here. So I hope that clarifies a few things. Okay. Um, all right. So... Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. If there are no other concerns or questions, then I think it's uh, safe to say that um, we're done today's topic. But before you leave, if you wouldn't mind letting me know what future topics you're interested in. This is my first online workshop. I am new to this and I would like to do more. So I am very interested in knowing, um, I mean, your questions are kind of helping me with targeting uh, what topics are of interest, but just feel free to drop that in the, uh, in the comment before you go. Thanks, Laura. Yes. Code completion. Yes, working with JSON is definitely a, a learning curve for us all. IntelliSense, yes. Okay, some more about theme.json. 